Just making sure we are currently live. It's not showing up live on my, uh, on my computer. But just give it a sec. And we shall see. I think we're good. You just peed on my, my dog just peed right behind me. I think we're waiting for this commercial. But that is all good. Get your questions in. Okay, today we're going to go through um, warm up, and we're going to. Um, well, there we are. Where do you know? Okay, so get your questions in. Where am I? I'm new to this whole live thing. So this is only my second real deal. All right, I think we're good. Uh, my computer's a little bit behind, so there's a slight delay, but that's all good. Today we're talking warm up, and uh, and so I'm going to go through warm up. I'm going to answer your questions, whatever you might have, get them in. Happy to uh, help out. Just trying to get this thing going. So warming up, uh, I just start with a wedge. I'm going to use my pitching wedge for starters, and I'm just going to hit. Just let's say I just get to the course. I'm about to play, and here we go, right? I get, the, I go to the range, and this is where I begin. And I just start just these little, little wedge shots, just like so. And you know, I might hit five to ten shots, just warming up, just warming up my uh, my swing early on. I don't want too much going on. Just really want to feel. Feel the club on the ground and get loose. And this is just how I start the process. Just these little swings right here. And I'm stretching out, just getting loosened up as, uh, as I get ready to play. So I notice a lot of times people get up and they just, they grab, and they just go for it. Boom. Full wedge shots right away. And that could really uh, uh, get you just out of sorts. You want to start off slow. Like you would never show up to uh, the track. Let's say um, you're a runner. You just don't show up and do a hundred meter sprint. So you gotta, you know, you slowly warm up and, and you're gonna get the, the blood flowing. So do it as short as possible. Right in here. You see my dog back there? Okay. And then I keep this swing for let's say pitching wedge, nine iron, eight iron. So let's say I start with the pitching wedge and then the next club I would go to for me would be my eight iron. And I do the same thing. And slowly work my way to a full swing. Like right in there. Okay, Tyler, I see your question. Tyler, 6'3", 250, played baseball his whole life. Great. So, what do you do? You're a big dude, uh, baseball player, so you're a great athlete. And how, who, do you, who do you want to look at? Who do you want to follow, similar size? Okay. So, um, obviously, Dustin Johnson, he's a big dude, tall. Uh, Bubba Watson, tall guy. Look at those guys. Those guys are really... Uh, limber and flexible, so that 250 for you, it might not really apply for them so much. Uh, so I would uh, look at a guy like uh, Mark Leishman. He's just a bigger, heavier set guy. And at your size, I would just work on a lot of flexibility. I don't know how muscular you are versus just kind of um, stocky. So I would make sure I'm working on flexibility a lot because that's a lot of uh, you know just mass to move around so just focus on those guys Ernie Els is certainly a, a bigger heavier guy and he, he just has obviously the smoothest swing you can imagine so I, I would look at those guys and then you know who you might want to check out is uh, 
like those celebrity golfers, like a Roger Clemens, he's probably more your size. Look at how he swings. He, he's actually a decent player. So, you know, you might want to check out some of those former athletes who are pretty good golfers. John Smoltz, he qualified for the U.S. Senior Open, I believe. So I would look at that guy. I'm still in my warm-up phase too. I don't want to rush my warm-up. I'm not in a hurry to warm up. This is the thing. If you, if you rush your warm-up, you're going to rush on the course. Typically, that's what happens. You know, you're just, oh, I'm in a hurry, hurry. And then you run to the first tee and then uh, you're in, how do you slow down? So like this process, let's say I'm going to play with a buddy, get there early, an hour early, and we're having a conversation, just talking. Who's going to win the game tonight? Cleveland? Golden State? Now, I live in L.A. right now, so we're kind of hoping that Cleveland gets trounced tonight. A little sweep. No offense to anybody, but we're trying to land LeBron James in, in town. So we want him to leave. Sorry, Cle if you're from Cleveland, I apologize. But we do want LeBron. Okay, so I, right the few times I played, hit my buddy's club, and they were too short. Okay, what do you got? Who else? Any more questions out there? From hitting, cut. Yeah, if you're bigger, so club fit, let's talk a little bit about club fitting. Let's say you're tall and uh, do you need longer clubs is a good question. Not necessarily, it's all about your height and your arms. Like I'm short, but I have long arms for my height. So yeah, I would, for me, I cut the clubs down. Uh, but I know guys who are shorter than me and they have short arms, so they're up here, they need longer clubs or standard length. And if you're big and tall, your arms are gonna hang. It's just, it all depends how high your arms hang from the ground. And then, you know, some people stand tall and then if I stood tall, the clubs would be way too short. So how much do you bend your knees? That's important. So notice as I warm up, I'm not taking full swings yet. I'm still three quarter, half swing, eight irons. And what's happening is I'm hitting the center of the club face just consistently. So I'm building confidence as I get ready to hit the course. Just here, and I'm just focused on just right here. Okay, then I might go to uh, uh, then I go two clubs later, six iron, and jump on the six. And I'm doing the same swing. Right in there, because I just want to hit solid shots all the time. I don't really care right now about a full swing. I just want this warm up to be, I want a good warm up. I'm just trying to finish on my toe, get to my finish, make sure that I'm hitting solid shots. And if I'm not hitting it solidly, then I shorten the swing even more. There, that was solid. So then I would lengthen it just a touch. And I'm, I, I, pro, I usually don't get to a full, full swing until my uh, four iron or hybrid. That's like a three quarter. So my six iron goes 180, 185, and these are probably going 160. That one probably went 165, 170. Getting like 10 shots and just keep it, keep it quiet as possible. Nothing too dramatic going on. Short, short and sweet is your swing. 
the shorter you keep your swing, the more you can get that lower body working. You start getting long, too early, you get up here, you've got you've to return this back so much that it just takes a while and you're just out of sync. So we want to avoid that. Okay, Wolf's Jet at 12, I think that's what it is. Are you more concerned with the strike more than where you, or how far the ball goes in your warm up? Yeah, exactly. My warm up, I'm much more concerned about the strike than um, the distance. I don't care about the distance. See, I know my six iron's gonna go 180 on the course, but the more solid, solidly I hit it, the straighter and more consistent I'm gonna be. And I'll be honest, like sometimes I'm just off, but my short swing here, like that can always be good. It's such a short swing. It's kind of like a, a pitch shot, a long pitch. And if you work your short game enough, that's gonna be pretty consistent most of the time, right? Like not too much is gonna go wrong in that, I could do that every day. So sometimes I'm on the course or I have, I'm warming up and it just feels so bad. I'm hitting it all over the place. But this swing, that swing is good. Okay, so that six iron is gonna go 150. <laughs> but you know what? If I know that that's good, I take that to the course and I don't mind. I don't care if I hit it short on the course because if I need 180, then okay, then I do that swing with my four iron. Who cares, right? You just, you just cared about your score, your, your shots. Are you hitting good shots? Because at the end of the, the day, when you look at your scorecard, nobody says, hey, what'd you hit on, uh, on number eight, that hole you birdied? You had uh, 150 yards. What'd you hit there? Well, I hit a four iron. The, who cares, right? It doesn't matter. I got a birdie. What'd you get? Triple bogey? And you hit a nine iron, right? Like, it doesn't matter. What matters is you strike it good and you build confidence. So that was a mistake I made on, early when I picked up the game was you're hitting it all over the place. Why not shorten that swing and try to be a short hitter and hit it straight? I, I can hit these punch shots. I, I, it's just something I didn't learn when I was beginning and it really hurt my game for a long time because you're trying to hit it so far. If you take that out of your mind and stop trying to hit it so far and, and start trying to hit it solid, you're gonna be a better player and have lower scores, I'm guaranteed. Okay, Tyler, we're back. But why isn't a player with your ability on tour? Great question. Why isn't it a player with my ability on tour? I can hit it far enough. Uh, I can hit it straight enough. I have a pretty good short game. And I played, well, okay. I started golf at, when I was 18 years old. The first round of golf I ever played, Thanksgiving Day. I'm 18 years old with my grandfather. Took me out. Uh, and like three and a half years later, I made the team at San Diego State University. And yeah, I, so my goal, I wanted to be a college golfer. I wanted to play. But what keeps a guy like me out of the tour? And honestly, after college, uh, I wanted to go and get a job in the uh, entertainment industry, in the film in industry, and that's what I did. So I just didn't dedicate myself at, the, at that level. So I can go out now and try to qualify for the US Open, but I just don't, I don't put in the practice today that is, you have to do to be on tour. There's a huge difference between scratch, I can go out and shoot par, I can shoot under par consistently, but you put me in uh, at Shinnecock, I mean, I'll, I'd be lucky to break 85, 80. I mean, that's a scratch player. And I'm not, I, I, you know, I'd probably shoot 82, 83, maybe, maybe there. 
So there's a huge di difference between scratch and pro. Just think about it. You're, you're a 12 handicapper or a 15. What does it take to get to a 10 or a single digit from where you are? How much work it's going to take? It's going to take a lot of work. So a scratch player, the pros are like plus five, plus four. At the courses I play, plus six. So think about it. I'm a scratch. I, I need to lower my average score by like where I play five shots. That's a lot. That's a lot. So do I have uh, dreams? Like, do I want to be on the, and a lot of people say this, why don't you go out for the champions tour when you're, when you turn 50, which, you know, I have a little ways to go, but, uh, but that's the thing is I'll be competing with like Phil Mickelson, Stuart Sink, Tiger Woods. <laughs> like, do, am I going to be able to beat and compete with those guys? I mean, they've been playing forever. So there's just a huge, huge gap between uh, scratch and pro. Huge difference, and it takes an immense amount of time. And then you've got the whole mental side of it too. You have to be training in that environment to be able to make it. So yeah, I have the swing, I have the shots, but there's so much more that's required. So much more. Okay, great question though, I appreciate it. Uh, okay, why are some tips or drills that you can do to consistently break 80? All right, we'll get there. Okay, so I've been hitting my six iron. Here's a drill. So when you're warming up, this is also a drill that I do, and this will help you consistently break 80. And it's that three quarter four iron. This is the, probably the club here I hit the most is my four iron. And I like this little three quarter guy right there. If you can hit that three quarter four iron consistently, that is a lifesaver. Because to break 80 consistently, you know, you're talking, okay, par 72, you can make eight bogeys, but let's say you make two birdies. So you make, well, you can make seven bogeys, but if you make two birdies, you can make seven bogeys, something like that, eight bogeys. Uh, you want to avoid the doubles. So that would be on the tight par fours where you're not hitting driver, take a four iron. And you want to be really, really solid with these long irons. And so many times I will lay back with a three wood or, or a hybrid but I'll give myself 200 yards or 210 into the green because there's, there's just trouble. So I'd rather have 200 into the green and make sure I'm in the fairway than uh, risk it and have 150 and, and, and risk being in the rough or the bushes or the water or out of bounds. Because from 200, I can get it on the green or really close. And then my short game, I'm solid, so I'm not going to worry about it. And that, that's one of the things I want to talk about today, these common mistakes that we make as golfers, especially the higher handicapper or when you're learning, you look at a hole and say, okay, hit driver. You just pull out the driver and go. And then you're in trouble. But I look at it now, and I had to learn this, took a long time, was let me, let me have a longer second shot in and make sure I'm in the fairway. Because if I miss the green, I have a good chance of getting up and down because I practice my short game a lot. But if I'm in the bushes, then I punch out or take a drop. There's a penalty there. I punch out, put it on, and now I'm angry and I three putt. Like triple bogey, double bogey time. But if I wanna, okay, 460 yard par four, like a long par four, man, take a, if, if there's too much trouble, take an iron. Take an iron, 200 yards. All right, I'm not in a fairway bunker. Eliminate that stuff. Come, make sure you're short of those, always. Know how far those things are. So now I have 260, 
into the, the green, right? Because I hit it 200, 460 par four. Okay, so what do I do? Three, no, not a three wood, four iron again. Because I practice that 60 yard little pitch. Now it depends where the pin is, but let's say the pin's in the middle of green, whatever. You're not playing places. They're not cutting pins on the edges of canyons or craziness. So 200 yards again. Now I have 60 yards, but I practice these little short game shots with my pitching wedge where I can just hit a nice shot and worst case scenario, I make bogey. All right. So that's so much better. And that's why when you want to break 80, doing these uh, punch shots or three quarter swings with your four iron every day is so, so important. It will help you a ton. That's just one, one of many drills. Keep watching the channel. I always have a ton of stuff. Okay. Where's your favorite practice area? Well, that's in LA. Okay. Uh, in LA County, my favorite, well, I practice a lot at my house which I highly recommend. You can get so much more done practicing in your home facility than anywhere else, believe it or not, because I can do anything I want here. I could take my time. I can chip, chip into little buckets that I like to do. I can hit almost every shot here, but in LA County, in LA, you come out here. I like rustic Canyon. I like to play at Rustic Canyon. That's a great, a great track. There's not a ton of great, let's say public practice facilities out here, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, the public, the public course scene in LA is, uh, is not the best. Angeles National is a great, a great track to, uh, to practice on. It's a great track to play on too. So keep them coming. Okay. So I'm hitting my four iron and now I still haven't taken a full swing. Now I take my hybrid. This is a 20 degree hybrid. And again, I'm not this, this, when I jump here, I'm like, okay, bring it back down a little bit more, like less than even that four. Just work on smoothness here. Yeah, that felt good. That smooth hybrid will really help you. And if you want to break 80 consistently, I would practice chipping with this as well. Little chip shots. Just out of the rough, uh, long putts. I would practice a lot uh, chipping and putting off the fringe with your hybrid. I've hit some of my best pressure shots ever with this club, uh, just chipping it, chipping runs. I mean, literally shots I'll remember for the rest of my life. So when I'm warming up, I do every other iron and then I do all my woods or metals, whatever you want to call it. So I work. And I'll do a little, a few less shots with these than my irons. But I'm hitting it pretty, pretty good right now. So there's no need to go do a full swing. I just don't need it. Because I know when you get on the course, you're going to swing harder and longer, just out of nerve and, and habit. Okay, now I'm hitting my three. I won't tee this up when I'm warming up. I don't like to do that. Okay. I just like to hit this off the ground, but this is up to you. This is just personal preference. Shorten it right there. Just keep it short. There's no need. I don't know. It might be a full looking swing, but it feels short. Just making sure my setup is perfect. If I do everything wrong, but, but I set up correctly, I'm happy. Okay. 
decent. It's all right, warming up, you know, I hit three or four shots here. Just getting it going. And now I'm closer to that full swing, but still I haven't necessarily, I'm not 100%. I'm never going 100% in my warm up. No way. Like this is probably 80, 85%. So that would be good. I might hit a, just work a fade and a draw when, when I'm warming up. Once I reach my three wood, then I might hit a, a little fade, just see if I got that. and see if I've got a draw. But I typically won't, for me, I won't practice draws at the range before I, I warm up. My, oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. What advice would you give on becoming more confident in the club and swing every shot. Okay, that's great. How do you believe in yourself more when you're up there? Yeah, I mean, that's a battle. You know, some days you're just like, oh, this is not gonna be good. That you don't want those thoughts. So that's why one of the main things is hitting into the net because as far as I'm concerned, I don't ever duck hook a ball <laughs> when I'm hitting into my net. Everything's perfect, mostly. So I'm not seeing bad shots all the time. What I'm seeing, nothing. I see, it feels good. So that's all I'm worried about. And then I can work on rhythm, rhythm and timing here. So I like that. I don't know, I mean, it could have sliced 20 yards, but I hit it solid. But let's say you're on the course and you're struggling. So this is what I like to do is I like to um, think about where I will work shots right to left or left to right when I'm struggling because I have no confidence. So I say, okay, let's say I'm hooking a lot. Great. So this time I'm aiming way right and I'm going to play a hook. I'm going to play that almost duck hook that I've been hitting every shot. And so I, that's what I go for. And then I'm like, oh, cool, I hit my shot, okay. Then the next hole, maybe I set it for a big, a big fade. And I start playing just crazier shots that I wouldn't normally play because, look, I'm already not confident. I'm not having a good day. I might as well work on something that is challenging. And then through this, for me, this is how I get confidence. And that was a big fade. So that's what I do to work on the, the different things. Oh, TK, why am I not a pro yet? Okay. Why not? Like I said, when you go and you compete as a professional, there's a big, big difference between amateur. And when high school kids destroy me as an amateur. <laughs> but yeah, no, I could play pretty good. But yeah, I don't put in, I don't put in the time in practice. I'm doing this kind of stuff, which is what, I mean, we all got, I don't know. And plus you've got to ask yourself, you think this tour life is like the greatest thing ever. Man, these guys, it's a grind. It is a grind. And most of the guys who are on tour, once they hit 40, you go into uh, what we call golf no, man, no man's land. Think about it. I mean, there's only a few guys out there who are in their 40s from 40 to 50 who you see consistently, right? 
Phil Mickelson, Tiger's in his 40s. What about guys, I, you just think about it, like these guys on tour, they're traveling nonstop. They're never home. Some of them have a lot of money. Some of them are just, they're just making it. You know, it's tough. And then what if you're on tour and then you get kicked off to the web.com tour again? Then you gotta deal with that. It's a grind. It's a real grind and people think they wanna be, be there but you've got to really ask yourself. Okay, when should a player, I get this, we're getting this question a lot. When do you go from cavity back to a blade? Where's my blade? Okay, so I'm a scratch player. I played, uh, I started with cavity backs when I first started, these Tommy Armor 845s. I think that's what they were. And then once I became a scratch or I, sh I was shooting in the 70s consistently, then I went to blades. But I was playing like every day or practicing every day. So when you're a high handicap, I recommend it will be helpful to play cavity backs just for the forgiveness uh, aspect of it. It's gonna be helpful. I, I played with a guy, uh, this guy, he's a, one of the top amateurs in the country out here. Uh, he wins a lot of uh, amateur events. He played in the Masters as an amateur. And he, he, I was playing with him and I was using my Mizuno blades. And he looks at my clubs and he's like, man, I'd never be able to hit these. I'm like, dude, you play in the Masters. Are you kidding me? You couldn't hit these? He won the mid-amateur one year. And he, he was like, yeah, I couldn't, no way. He was playing cavity backs and he shot a 65 that day. He beat me by like 10 shots, right? So I, and even as a scratch, I was playing the MP68s and then my long irons, I was playing this uh, MP62, which is not a full cavity back. It's like a muscle cavity back. And I had a combo mix set. So as you get better, start, you can include blades in your wedges first and see how that goes. So your, your pitching wedge, gap wedge, sand wedge, lob wedge. I would start there. If you're gonna start with blades, put those in and see how that works first. And then if you like it, then slowly add them in. Nine iron, eight iron, seven iron and go that route. And then if you get there to the point where you want a full blade, uh, long iron, then you could do it. But I would, I would work it in slowly. I have some, I'll bring those out next time. The, like the four, three, two iron blades. But even this one I hit pretty solid. But then I have my Titleist. Uh, AP2, which is a cavity back, a forged cavity back. You probably can't see it too good. It's very similar to the Mizuno. I think they're made by like the same guy. I don't even know. Anyways, so I would take it slow with that. Just got this. Um, your net will be putting, oh, Kevin's building the, the net. That's awesome. If you play your best golf when you don't think, can you talk about self-talk and how thoughts creeping into your head while you play? How do you get back into flow? Any self-talk triggers? Yes. So, avoid stuff like, ah, oh, I'm an idiot. God, dang it, you're so stupid. That, that's not gonna help you. I do it. You look at, uh, Now, I don't know, everybody's different, okay? Sometimes, you know, I would smack myself in the head or I'd get so angry, right? And I don't know, sometimes you feel like you gotta let it out to be, to, to, you know, to get out of that mode. But what I do now and what helps me is what I talked about earlier is 
I start playing shots and say, okay, you, you just might not have it today. You've got you've to accept that fact. Like, okay, today is not my day. And you're angry about that and you're frustrated. I was, I was in a tournament and I'm like, are you serious? I played the front nine and I'm like nine over par. And I was so angry. And I was thinking like, why am I even here today? And I, I literally, was, I started to walk to my car after the ninth hole. I'm like, I'm out of here, forget it. But I, I just thought, okay, I can't do that. I can't go home and tell my kids I quit. That's just not cool. So I said, okay, forget it. So I'm gonna play. And I'm like, I'm just gonna play shots. Forget about everything. I'm just gonna play a shot every swing. So on my drive, hit a draw, then I hit a fade, then I hit a high, hit it low. I shot three under on the back. And I beat everybody in my group. We were all trying to qualify for a, uh, you know, the next, the next event, this, uh, I don't know, SCGA qualifier or something like that, uh, California amateur at the time. And I didn't make it, but it, it just, I shot the lowest score in my group when I was like getting destroyed on the front nine. And it's just because I just, you have to shift your mind and think, think, just really try to think differently. And for me, it was working shots left to right, right to left, high, low. And I just became a shot, shot maker and it worked. And so now that's what I do all the time. Right? So where were we? We were warming up. Okay, I, hit my, I was hitting my driver. So I'm done hitting drivers. Okay, well, here's how I finish up my drives. So I hit like four or five drives, and then I'm gonna hit three shots that replicate what I'm gonna hit on that very first tee. That makes sense? I'm gonna move this real quick. All right, one of the issues we have is my computer and stuff is uh, in the sun, so I have to move it, move it out of the way. Otherwise, we overheat. Don't want to do that. So um, what I do is, uh, okay, here's that first hole. Wherever it is you're playing, visualize it in your head. Sometimes I take that scorecard out and I look at it. And I'm like, okay, first hole is what I'm going to hit. Again, it's 80% swing maybe. And I'll do my full shot, my full pre-shot routine when I do this. Take a practice swing back here, come in, step up, and I'm just thinking about that first tee. One, two, down and go. And wherever it is, let's say I'm playing in a, you know, when I was playing in my club championship, I would just think, okay, they're gonna announce my name. And so I announce my name. Now on the first tee, blah, 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 Matt Fisher, you know, here we go. And then, and then I walk up and I'm just, you know, I practice that. Look, one, two, and go. And I'll do that, you know, one more time. Just so I know that, you know, I'm solid. I'm good to go here. How we doing? We still, everything's still live? We're still good? All is good. Thanks for watching. Hey, let me know too in your comment, comment below. Let me know if, do you like the live stream or do you like my videos better? I'm not gonna stop doing the videos, but I wanna do more live streams. So, but just let me know what you prefer. I'm curious about that. This is my last. See, my pre-shot routine got all messed up. So I, okay, it's because I started talking. Practice swing, boom, walk in. Just make sure it's all perfect. Look, look, go. I'm good. Okay, so I hit my driver. I'm gonna put this back. Everything's good, I'm feeling good. I'm about to go to the first tee, but I want to get my wedge again, and I'm just going to hit, I'll probably get my 55 degree, 
wedge or something, my sand wedge. And what I will do is I'll just do this little ladder drill right now. This is what I like to do at the very end and just hit this. And then the next ball, remember you're at the range. It just carries a little bit farther than that. Boom. And then the next one goes a little farther. Right. And then this one would hit higher in the net. So it goes just a touch farther. The next one would go in my neighbor's yard. And then I would do that and I would just see how many balls I can do before, you know, I, I, I'm either at a full swing or, or, you know, I mess up and it doesn't go as far. And that would kind of be my last warm up thing here at the range. Then I go hit a few chips. I putt a little bit and do my putting warm up and then I'm done and I'm, I'm, I'm on the first tee. I'm on the first tee. How are we doing? How's everybody doing? Okay, so common golf mistakes we want to go over, okay? Because I see this all the time. Bad setup is, in my opinion, the most common. And one thing I see is this shoulder is down too much, like this. People are, they, their shoulders aim way too far to the left or if you're left-handed to the right. And here's the, here's the problem with that. When you're setting up, people look, okay? You look, and when you look, you turn your shoulders a little bit, okay? And you're looking out there, and then you turn your head back. But now everything's pointed left, okay? So we wanna avoid that. So that's why I come in, parallel to the ball, and we set up first looking at the ball because we will typically face that way and now we're good we're just we're not turned this way and we would never do that so just I'm facing you facing that way I'm hitting that way right I'm facing this way I don't look that way yet I look at my ball and I set up and then I just practice not moving and turn my head turn my don't turn my head like this just practice swiveling your head like that like that. You're almost like, turn your head over, okay? So here, turn your head, right there. And now you should be, your shoulder should be good. You can check it right there. Okay, so that's one of the most common mistakes when it comes to setup that I see. I'm not gonna comment on all the comments. <laughs> okay. So set up there. Another thing I see is our stance is too wide, way too wide. Okay, that's not shoulder width. It's not your shoulder width. <laughs> this is shoulder width. So we wanna make sure our setup is not too wide. It's better, if you're gonna make this mistake, it's better to be too narrow than too wide. Of the two, that would be the better mistake, is to be too narrow, okay? So let's be, let's be too narrow rather than too wide. But if you can be right there. And then obviously ball position, we wanna go off our nose for most of our irons, and then off our left ear for driver, right there. That's your driver. Everything else is here. That's just a common, common mistake. Those, those are some of the most common mistakes. Another mistake I see a lot of, and those of you who have sent me your swing, like most everybody does this, is your finished position. Like that, I'm not on my toe here. That, like, that's kind of on the ball of my foot. You really want to get up there as best you can. And I don't like seeing this. 
I don't think seen this. You know, obviously, if, if you're hitting a punch shot, like that's fine. But most of those swings, I want here. If you can get there. Now, if you're if you got some physical issues, that hey, I get it. But then you could just narrow that stance in a lot more and still get there. For the most part, I don't think you're gonna have an issue getting there. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'll check out awesome dating site, but thank you so much. I'm good. How about setup for woods? You got it. Okay. Again, setup for woods is like this. Here's what I do. Feet together, right in the center, right? This is where you should, everything should begin. Okay. Everything right down the middle. Then I'm just going to take one little step with my front foot and one giant step with my back foot. There. And that should get you a proper setup. Ball should be off your left ear. Don't worry about, don't put it on your heel. Don't do that. Because if you have a wide stance and you put it off your heel, you're, I mean, you're, that's no good. That's going to be a problem. Go off your ear. Then you're, here's where we, we want a little, we want a little tilt in our spine angle. Just a little bit. Okay. I mean, some people talk about degrees and how much, and I'm just here. I'm like that much. You got to feel it like that much is too much. Okay. You just, you want a little spine tilt right there. So set up off your left ear, grip, boom, right there. And now you should be good. Hands, again, I keep my hands in the middle for my drive, watch. My, hand, my hands are still in the middle. And then when I tilt, they, they kind of come forward a little bit. So my hands are in the middle. That brings the club here, but I tilt, and that and that gets them forward. So I don't push my hands forward, and then tilt. You know, and then man, that looks weird. So I don't do that. Just very simple. Right on my belt buckle, forward, little tilt, and you're good. That was pretty good. Just work on that setup. It's it's easy. Okay, beautiful. All right, all right, we're getting there. How about fairway wood setup? Fairway, I love it. Okay. This is the easiest and most difficult shot in golf. Because if you don't do it correctly, obviously you're gonna have some problems. But if you do, and they make these things so good these days. They just glide through the grass, <laughs> hit a good, they're so easy to hit. So again, I'm setting up middle, okay? And I just do little step, bigger step, and I'm right there. And I'm, I'm literally like right off my left ear almost, just, just right, right between my ear, maybe my eye, left eye. That's where I like it. Hands in the middle, just a slight tilt. Slight tilt, and, and you're good, right there, okay? And I'm just trying to take that, my hands straight back, right here. And again, you've got, I know, here's the challenge with fairway woods, is you typically have a longer shot. Two, two something, 250, 260, maybe I'm trying to reach a par five in two. And so I want to hit it harder, but man, you've really got to take that out of your mind. You just, ha you just have to work on that. Think about solid, smooth contact. That, I, that is just something you're going to have to fight that urge. Like, oh, 260, I got to jump on this. If you have to jump on it to get it there, I wouldn't hit it. I would back it down and say, okay, I'm going to lay up. 
you, let's say it's a par four and it's your second shot and you got 260 and you're like, oh, I could, I could get there. I could do it. If, you know, God parted the Red Sea, I could get there. Okay, if that's your mindset, put it back and hit it 200 and then chip up because this is going to put you somewhere horrible. If that's, if you have to jump on it. Okay, a lot of times I have like 240. Let's say you do a par five, I'm like, okay, cool. I can, let me, let me back it down. Let me just choke down on this. Now I got it. Instead of taking, let's say my hybrid, which I could hit if I jump on it, let's take this, smooth it. Because that smooth swing is gonna work out so much better for you. So if you have to jump on a fairway wood, put it away, put it away. Hit something 200 that you can be in that fairway. I don't care if it's a par four, it's going to save you strokes. You, we have to start thinking about, even look at the pin, like where's that pin? Okay, where can I get up and down from when I miss the green? Cause you're at 260, okay? You're probably not gonna hit the green. Where can I get up and down from? Pins back right. Okay, left. I mean, I'm gonna aim, man, I'm gonna aim way over there. Okay, cool. I'm gonna aim way over there. I'm gonna play a cut. Because even if I pull it, at least I'm on the correct side. I'm going way over there. Maybe there's a bunker there. How good are you out of the bunker? If you're good, you might try to put it in the bunker. If you're not, again, put the club away and get something else out that will help you. Okay. Yes. Yes, the answer is yes. Okay. Yes, even off the fairway. Same thing off the fairway. Uh, Randy, you're 65. Would you suggest a five wood instead of a three wood? Yes, I would. I would. I would get the five wood. My, okay, my son, he's not 65. When he was uh, 13, I was getting him fitted for clubs and he's a great, I mean, a great player. But, he wasn't getting his three wood high enough to get the distance. So we, we got him a five wood and we just call it a three wood. And he hits it as far as anybody would hit a three wood it, because we just wanted more height. So yes, a five wood, get a seven wood, Randy. You know, it's not a girl's club. <laughs> it's, it's a scoring club, five wood, seven wood, do it. Like my three wood is 16 and a half degrees. It's all, it's, it might as well be a four wood because I need that extra height, which helps. So when you're practicing fairway woods, the common, for me, the common mistake is when I was learning, I would always hit it off a tee, which, okay, that's fine. I teed up really low but I would practice off the ground as much as you can, or the mat, and start off with the shortest swing possible and work it, and work it. Right, if you can't hit that solid, then uh, it's gonna be difficult. But I would always, when I'm struggling with my drives, I get my three wood and I just start hitting off the dirt. Because you can't, you, you can't come in steep. You're just, you're forced to shallow it out. And then you might get an alignment stick here. And I would just put it this way, a little 45 degree angle or whatever angle that is, okay? And that's my swing path going through the ball. And I just see it there, I'm like, oh, okay. So I wanna take it back and I wanna, there, I wanna bring it in there. Just for, you know, for practice, visually. I don't wanna take it back here, I wanna take it back here and then just feel like bringing it in that way. And that will help you uh, shallow it out so you can slide it across the ground. That really helps me. Okay, a lot of setup questions, which is good. Okay, yeah, hybrid, same thing. So again, hybrid, hybrid I look at it as like a four iron setup almost center 
just slightly in front of center. And just a little tilt here. There you go. You know, it's a six iron, five iron, six iron, four, five, six iron setup. Right there. And these should be your best friend. They really should. On those long par threes, fantastic. Fairways, laying up shots. But you should never, ever, ever try to hit a hybrid hard. I wouldn't, because you could easily hook these. You could just, I mean, just how they're built. A lot of them you could turn the toe over pretty easily. So I would never try to hit this hard for me. These are smooth guys. And you could do, uh, this is 20, you could do 16, 15 degrees, 14, 13, there's a just, whatever works best for you. So setup is like a four iron, five iron. And you should be good. Okay, who's gonna win this week? What is it, the St. Jude? Is that what it is? Is Phil Mickelson gonna take it this week? Playing well? How about uh, next week? Who do you guys got? You know who's gonna play well? You hear it from me, Tony Finau is gonna play well. Tony Finau, watch out for that cat. He is gonna play well, that's, that's my, I don't know if he's gonna win, but I believe he's gonna be up there a lot. He, that dude is playing some good golf, in my opinion, and I think he's gonna be there. Got just a couple minutes left. My pick was Ricky Fowler, but if Ricky's in the lead, on Friday night, I'm gonna unpick him. I'm sorry, Ricky. I love you, buddy. But I, I just, but I want Ricky four to five shots back on Sunday. And then he's my pick, okay? Maybe, yeah, three to four, four shots. And then I like him. But I don't like him in the lead. I like him on the lead on Sunday at 10 p.m. That's what I like. <laughs> So it's just, I want him to grind it out Thursday, Friday, have a medium Saturday, decent Saturday, and then Sunday I want him to do what he did at the, uh, at the players a couple years ago, a few years ago, whenever that was. That's my Ricky Fowler hope. But I wouldn't mind seeing Phil. Who do you guys like? Who do you guys like? Always good. Last time, we did live, My, we, sh we lost connection right at the very end. Hopefully we, that doesn't happen. So let me know, we're gonna, I wanna do live, live shows. I don't know how often. Do you want it every day? Every day, we, I'm trying different times of the day. This is really sunny right now. We've been having June gloom, so I thought it'd be perfect, but the sun is just baking. So that's why I do later in the afternoon, the sun's over there, it's shady. Feels better, it's hot. Uh, so we're gonna work that out. Let me know what time works for you. I don't know if that's gonna help me. You got Tiger, Tiger. You guys, are, I, man, I wanna see Tiger win. I'm telling you, if he putts, if he putts well, just those guys can just, Cash it in, because he's hitting the ball. And you know Tiger is putting in the work right now. You know he just wants to just stick it to those guys and say, I'm Tiger Woods. You know, you know he does. I mean, the dude had his back fused. He's got his back fused and he comes out and he's like, he's right there. You know he's gonna be picked for the Ryder Cup. Would you not pick him? Would you pick Tiger for the Ryder Cup? Dude, I'd, I'd pick him. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You. You, you have to pick him. Whoever is uh, airing that, NBC, ABC, they're like, uh, okay, to, uh, I mean, if I'm a television executive, I'm like, uh, we're airing the Ryder Cup, you better pick Tiger. I'm not saying that happens, but if I'm the network executive, I'm picking up the phone to, uh, who is it? Uh, Who's the captain? Furick? Is it Furick? I don't know who the captain is. Forgot. Or just whatever. I'm calling the I'm calling everybody. Dude, you better get Tiger on that team. 
I don't, I don't want him as a captain. I want him playing, playing. It's a TV show, as far as I'm concerned, because we all want that. Uh, yeah, uh, do I have n targets I aim at the net? Well, so net plays gave me this net. They have the X, the yellow X there, which is cool. So I aim at the corn, the, I'll aim at quadrants. Uh, so there's like a, a triangle, there's four triangles and I'll aim at them and I'll say, okay, I'm aiming at the, well, or it, where the yellow meets the black on the right, high right. That's where I'm gonna aim this uh, hybrid right here. So it was good, it was just too low. I don't know, I'm hitting the hybrid, but. So yeah, I do. And then some of I'll, I'll aim, okay, left, left triangle, medium height. Yeah, I got it, perfect. So yeah, I aim at different pieces of the net all the time. I just don't hit, uh, I just don't hit at the net, but I try to aim specifically, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm set up right center right now, so. So that's what I try to do. It's always good to aim at something and uh, at the net is great because, and that's why I like a net, just to kind of wrap things up here, is you can, when you're practicing in a net, you're, I'm only working on where I start the ball. Start the ball, start the ball, start the ball. And, I, and I, you'll start noticing that you know exactly how high every club goes and that just totally helps you on the golf course, especially when you're in trouble because you've got uh, things you have to go under, things you have to go over, and you're like, wait a sec. Now my seven iron's not gonna go that high. I'm gonna hit a nine iron. And you'll just know that based on this, this type of practice. So I love it, I love it. I'd like Tiger to win too. Okay, so anyways, uh, we're gonna wrap it up. That is uh, it, I'm picking Ricky Fowler. We'll talk more about this. Let me know, keep commenting. Uh, let me know if you want to continue, if you like the live shows better, or if you like the videos better, or do you want both? Whatever, I'll probably do both, but we're gonna do more live shows probably. Right now I'm gonna try it consistently, almost, not every day, but almost every day, just to keep things, uh, see what works the best, what time works the best, and if you're driving in your car, don't comment, but you can listen. Hope this helps. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. We're good. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna fade out here. Here, here we do this. Yeah, there we go. All right. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you stopping by. I'm looking at the wrong camera. Hold on. Hold on. I'll fix that. See that? There. Switch cameras. Anyways, thank you so much for stopping by. Really appreciate. Hey, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, share it. Tell your friends to subscribe. I'm trying to bring you great content. Let me know what you're looking for, what we can work on in our live videos. Happy to answer your questions. I'm here to help. You guys rock. Hey, we're gonna hit 10,000 followers here soon on YouTube. We're close, we're close, baby. That's all from really this year. So I appreciate it. I want you guys to know that. And let's get to 100,000. That's the next goal. Can we do it? You gotta share, you gotta help me. You gotta work with me. That's the goal, and I wanna keep it as much free as I can. This is free, no subscription required. It's free, free content. There you go, thanks so much. Thanks for stopping by. Rock the game, play well this weekend. Let me know how you're doing. Peace, I'm out.